Hello and welcome back. So good to see you. So we're halfway through our practices of the course of Breach and Anchor. So it takes energy, right, very naturally to, to move from center yourself, out of your cell's organs, into the outward environment. And it takes a little bit of energy and effort to reverse that. That's why typically the first 15, 20 minutes of your yoga practice, sometimes more challenging, not in terms of exercise challenging, but it's still maybe that habit of keep reaching for your phones or being intact, or you're still thinking about your to-do list. So this is part of the usefulness of getting up really, really early when the sun is a 60 degree below the horizon and when the 60 degree above the horizon. This is a Brahma Mahurta. Brahma's favorite time, God's favorite time. It's exponentially more powerful and the effect of your practice is more powerful during that time. And it's also the psychic space is very clear and to do items haven't got hold of you. Typically, if the sun is not up, as the psyche doesn't go about. And perhaps even that spend and try to one day that you only pick up your phone if you have a very clear, specific purpose in doing so. So I need to call to make a dinner reservation or call a friend to talk to. You need to send an email to somebody else and such and such things versus you just kind of picking up habitually, <laughs> scrolling through, uh, open the app. It's never a conscious thought of what I'm actually doing. It's just a habit, right? So that's the difference between where these things become useful and awesome to potentially being problematic. All right. So... Um, So we were talking about subconsciousness and consciousness in the uncharted human history. Who knows? We maybe have sophisticated devices, devices than the mobile. But anyway, we, we don't know. We are uncharted territories. We never raise the children with a supercomputer and put into our pockets. So we're we're always in uncharted territories, right? It's fine because we're meditators, we're yogis. So we're able to access our intuition, even in the uncharted territory, to make the wisdom decision. That's the value of being meditators. That's why these practices in general shouldn't be for those who are spiritually inclined. It should be integrated into just normal daily society. What is expecting? Like taking a bath, brushing your teeth becomes a ritual. And this should, if we want to be functioning in a society, we need to bring all these things into every day. So vast majority, we don't have a true happy psyche majority or not having meditation practice of some sort. It doesn't mean that it needs to be extravagance. It, it needs to be consistency when i'm saying my mind stays clean specifically is my subconscious mind stays clean because in every moment in time this crown chakra this intellect so we're going to make it mainstream i can't just say crown chakra we have to translate that for some audience here so it's intellect release thousand as calls thousand petal it describes this as the uh, in the second 2000 thoughts, the intellect, or you can think about it, the thousand vibration, 
as, as long as this creativity of life continues and creation impulsing every moment, every blink of the eye, creative energy is impulsing. That's why we have such a drive to procreate because everything is based on, so animals have this basic instinct to procreate. Because the whole engine of life is creativity. And one of the unique things about human beings is that we have the higher triangle, we have the chakras, higher chakras, in Ajna, third eye, and the crown. So every moment of the unit of time, the crown releases thousands of vibration, like an impulse of the soul. So this is far about the yogic philosophy. You can be simultaneously talking about architecture of the human being and architecture of the entire universe. And it's the same architecture. Makes sense? So that is what is the nucleus of me and you. We are the center of creation. And there's always impulse, impulse, impulse. The beginning was just strike, sound, or world, word. That's why we put so much emphasis in the yogic training and the sound, Karen, because what we're trying to do is to disrupt all powers of the mind. So one unusual power is to taking my phone for no apparent reason. So that takes my prana. It requires energy for me to do that. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not enjoying my Instagram watch sometimes. Once, once a time a day, I, I, I do scroll. Nothing against the thing, but it's against unconscious habits and diluting my drain energy left for the real creativity because it takes my creativity my my energy is, is using my valuable energy right makes sense so this creative energy for everything i do in my life so if i'm habitually anxious and thinking and and worry it it maintains my anxiety and worry it does just as requires my Creativity to transcend my anxiety, transcend my worries. And that's probably why we are so suffering, cannot sleep at night as anxieties go on more, right? Basically, this is the truth. So to actually shift that and not to have enough energy in the system to actually visualize fortunate circumstances and project those into my future, it takes equal amount of energy to do that as it does the negative version of it. And one of them, they're both, by the way, both illusions. <laughs> what am I visualizing fortunate circumstances of projecting into my future or project unfortunate into my future? They're all illusory, Ill illusory. Illusory, maybe. <laughs> However, yeah, never do that. I mean, words, words, sudden, sudden, such a weird word. <laughs> anyway, so it takes me the same amount of energy to be worried than amount of being gratefulness. You know, it's like a, it's, it's, it's equally taking the energy. So where do I give my energy to? It's the same amount. Then that I can choose. There's nothing else I can choose in my life, but I can choose where do I put my energy into directions. So we were talking about conviction. So if I really have conviction, my beliefs, that's why the biochemistry of my body is giving that conviction of what I have, okay? So it's what fate is so important, like dharma. It's a real fate is based on experience. So sometimes I don't have experience quite yet, but I resonate with something that gives me enough of conviction to try it at least. But then I actually can have an experience. It's like, oh, this is what they're talking about, right? Third eye and chakra and citra and citra. Even if I've had some experience of that, then I have conviction. 
or a little bit more conviction. <clears throat> and then with that type of deeper faith that has experience underneath that is giving the strength to the conviction, then I'm in business. I can really move and use my willpower into the productive way. And I can do things like pray for this and productively in order to harness the energy that is flowing through my organism into this vehicle of human body and mind. Making sense? Yeah. And now I'm becoming more the mastery of the mind as opposed to always just hoping for the best and wishing that I would get and my life would be different. Now, you can actually start to influence the situation fairly profound because you have now command in the mind. And if you have the ability to command your mind, you have the ability to be happy regardless of any situation, regardless how painful it might be in your life, you can joyfully, you can live joyfully. And this, that's the way of the yogi. It is as under any circumstances, you're committed to the blissfulness, you're committed to the happiness. And because your primarily courtship isn't pleasure, isn't, isn't good time or bad times or anything, the primary courtship is dharma. Dharma flows between good and bad, between ups and downs. This is where the God resides. This is a subtle energy. It's underneath, underneath our lives. And every moment I'm impulsing, 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 impulsing. My crown release, thousand thoughts, which is the original impulse of the soul, the sound. So the vibration, think about this. They're gonna do a little bit deep of meditation and these breathe and anchor courses. It's an amazing way to get you into between the nucleus of the pure intelligence and pure love. It's a nucleus of creation, nucleus of your being. And between that pure energy and pure intelligence and pure love and your current awareness, <clears throat> current experience of yourself <clears throat> as a subconscious mind. So <clears throat> in between this, essence of you, pure energy, pure love, pure essence, regardless of what current experience you are, this is where you're made of in between the experience of yourself. And that is subconscious. So when we say purify the psyche, clean your mind, we mean, we mean purify that channel that is subconscious because this all thousand thoughts is, Antara becomes, it's, antara is impulse of so, uh, soul, the sound, comes to mantra. Mantra means what? Very simple, man is mind and antaram is wave. So mantra is simply wave of mind. So when we do a mantra, a specific mantra, sound wave or mind wave that is there to harness the energy that is flowing through your psyche, for positive benefit. It has a yantra, a shape. If you think about anxiety thoughts, anxiety feelings, anxiety emotions, in order for my anxiety or depression or anger or whatever those habits that I have, those tendency that I have, in order to maintain themselves, if, if I'm an anxious person, in order for continuing being an anxious person, person I have to keep feeding that subconscious structure, right? Anxious thought, anxious feeling, anxious emotions, anxious desires. But think about those desired forms as a shape that they have more distorted sounds, like a jagged shape, right? Irregular and they're not symmetrical and they're stuck into the structure of the subconscious mind and they're continuing holding this frequency of feel that is keeping me insecure keeping me overwhelmed, keeps me in the doubt, doubt, keeps me depressed, any of those things. Are you with me? So what's happening when we do the mantra, for instance, sat nam, sat nam, sat nam, truth, asking for through it. And am I consistently doing enough of that in my day, in my practice? Not am I only not going to strengthen my old lower frequency habit, it's actively attacking them. 
esotantric science. So Antra is the impulse of soul. It comes with this um, mantra and it has a shape as a yantra and there's a direction. It's called Tantra. It's very simple. It's very sophisticated at the same time. So what we're trying to do in these classes is to crystallize the mind and make it clear for pure energy that vibrates in the center of you, that is endeavoring and wishing you, guiding your life. It's your internal organic GPS. It's already there. It's not outside of you. All you need to do is to naturally accomplish what you came here to do, is to do these practices, consistency, and be honest with you how much you can do a day. Because without this, you, you can have a temporary happiness. You can have a temporary joy as a gamble. Maybe not. So the only way guaranteed joy and love and happiness is dharmic living. Uh, you can define that how you want to define. It's not a religious living. It's you're in harmony with whatever you came here into the first place and the energy that comes from the nucleus of your center. And the only thing that is in between of your current experience and that supreme energy is your mind. And everything in yoga, I don't care if it's downward facing dog, up dog, or sitting still meditation, Everything in yoga is about purification of your psyche so the infinite can vibrate through you. So that is what we're trying to do through these course and practice. I really strongly invite you to join. Okay, let's begin. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Oh. Oh, <laughs> 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 